10 interesting facts about hard drives. Number one, construction. Hard drives of varying size and capacity have had the same basic construction since their inception. A read-write head that moves over a spinning platter just nanometers above the surface. This contained from one to 10 platters. More platters means more capacity, and obviously more data density per platter means even more capacity. Number two, form factor. The three and a half inch and the two and a half inch form factor have pretty much been around uh, since the inception of the P desktop PC. A three and a half inch has been around for about 40 years since 1983, and the two and a half inch laptop since around 1988. Other form factors were introduced over time, but today it's only these two are the primary ones. And you can see here we've got the uh, five inch, three and a half inch, two and a half inch, and a 1.8 inch and a one inch hard drive from distant past. Now these were used like in iPods and things like that. The size designation, like a two and a half inch or three inch drive, represents the size of the actual disc platter. Like this is from a three and a half inch disc. Now that is really kind of an estimate because the three and a half inch hard drive platter is actually 3.74 inches, but it was named three and a half inches for convention's sake. Number three, connector. The power and data interface evolved from IDE, which is like this guy here, which used a, this kind of uh, cable here, which could connect up to two disks and one cable. Uh, and it evolved in about 2003 to the SATA cable that we know today. And as far as power is concerned, the uh, hard drives used to use the four pin Molex connector that we're still familiar with in PCs today. And, uh, Obviously, SATA has evolved to this power connector here. The SATA interface is a subset of the SAS specification. And the SAS drives are primarily used in servers, but uh, you can actually plug a SATA drive into a SAS port, but you cannot plug a SAS drive into a machine with a SATA port. You can see here the slight difference in those. You've got uh, that little bump there on the SAS port drive and you have just a gap there on the uh, SATA port. So that notch there kind of differentiates and keys the uh, drive connector. Now there's been three speeds through those SATA connectors. SATA 1 is synonymous with SATA 150 with an interface that supports up to one and a half gigabit per second with a maximum throughput of 150 megabytes per second. SATA 2 is synonymous with SATA 300 with an interface that supports up to three gigabits per second with a maximum throughput of 300 megabytes per second. SATA 3 is synonymous with SATA 600, which is the latest standard, with an interface that supports up to 6 gigabit per second with a maximum throughput of 600 megabytes per second. Now the SATA connector has not changed, it's just that the speed that the uh, controllers can manage have increased over time. Now each SATA generation is backwards compatible, but it will be limited by the speed of the slowest interface either on the drive or the host machine that the drive is plugged into. Number 4. Voltage. Laptop and desktop hard drives have the same SATA connector, right? But uh, the desktop hard drives use both 12 volt and 5 volt to run, whereas a uh, desktop 2.5 inch drive only requires 5 volt to run. That's why you can run a 2.5 uh, inch drive using a USB adapter on your computer, because USB supplies 5 volts. Number five, speed. Hard drive platters have a constant data density across the platter. The speed of the spindle is constant, typically 5400 or 7200 RPM, and linear velocity is equal to the angular velocity times the radius. So as the disk sweeps from the outside to the inside of the platter, right, like that, the performance will decrease because it has less data over time that's passing underneath that head. Now to that point, an interesting fact is that uh, on a three and a half inch disk like this guy here, at 7200 RPM, the outer edge is traveling at over 80 miles per hour. Now just for fun, let's do the math to show this is the case. So we take linear velocity, which is equal to V, and that comes in distance over time, or something like miles per hour. Then you need your angular velocity, which is equal to omega, which is in radians per second. And by definition, linear velocity equals angular velocity times the radius. V equals omega times R. Now in this case, the disk is rotating at 7200 RPM, so omega is equal to 7200 RPM. And since omega is in radians per second, we have to convert from our radian revolutions per minute to radians per second. So we take 7200 RPM divided by 60 to give us seconds, and multiply it by two pi. That gives us 240 pi radians per second. Since V equals omega R, 
we know what omega is now, 240 pi times the radius, which is 3.74 inches, the diameter of a 3.5 inch disc, which, you already sh which we showed that it's actually 3.74, not 3.5, and, and that comes out to 448.8 pi inches per second, approximately 1410 inches per second. So now we take that, do unit conversion from inches per second all the way over to miles per hour, and that gives us 80.1 miles per hour, or 128.9 kilometers per hour. Six, capacity. Disk drives use a base 10 capacity. Windows uses base two. This is why you see a difference in capacity in Windows when you buy a disk and plug it in. Disk drives are also divided into sectors, commonly 4K in size, so the smallest a file can be seen as on the hard drive is 4K. This is part of the reason why there is a difference in actual size and size on disk when you look at it through Windows Explorer. Now this is something that's interesting. Each disk platter in the first hard drive, in the 1956 IBM 350, it stored about 800,000 bits. Disk platters today can store over 16 trillion bits per platter. That's over 20 million times the capacity in a significantly smaller package. Now if you think about this, the capacity of conventional 3.5 inch disks have increased from about 20 megabytes in 1983 when the three and a half inch uh, form factor was introduced to over 20 terabyte in 2023. So over the course of 40 years, capacities have increased by a factor of one million. Number seven, air versus helium. Hard drives don't run in a vacuum and the air filled ones actually have an access hole to equalize pressure within the hard drive, but it uses a filter to block even the finest particles from entering the hard drive. The tiniest particle can cause damage to the hard drive head and platter and destroy all your data. So you should never open a hard drive either. And you can see an example of the access hole on this air-filled hard drive here. Underneath there is an actual uh, very fine particulate uh, filter in there. Now this is an example of a helium-filled drive, which you'll notice um, these are hermetically sealed. And uh, newer disk, uh, high-capacity disks, typically 12 terabyte or 10 terabyte and larger, uh, use helium. And they're hermetically sealed and self-contained. And that can actually help reduce power and heat by as much as 50% compared to an air-filled drive. As a matter of fact, I know that uh, the 20 terabyte drives of the same drive line, like in Western Digital, the WD Red Pro, um, uses the same amount of power to run at 20 uh, terabyte helium filled versus a 2 terabyte air filled. Number eight, magnets. Now, hard drive data is actually stored using electromagnetism on the platter. The hard drive platters are coated with magnetic material that store your data as bits that are manipulated by this read write head here. One polarity, either positive or negative, north-south, however you want to look at it, is equivalent to a binary one, and the opposite polarity is a binary zero. Now, hard drives also use a powerful neodymium magnet here. You can see it on each of these things here, which kind of controls the uh, head movement here. And these are the strongest uh, naturally occurring magnets in the world. Number nine, smart drives. I am the smart SMRT. Now, drives can fail at any time for any number of reasons, but hard drives also are a bit smart. Hard drives contain ECC or error correction code for each sector, so it can actually tolerate many errors due to defects or an unstable sector and actually correct the errors. There are even spare areas on the hard drive to move a sector to should another one fail. Disks store and monitor critical hard drive attributes with the Smart Monitoring System, which stands for Self-Monitoring, Analysis, and Reporting Technology. Hard drives can run their own smart tests, initiated by user manufacturer third-party utility, where it runs self-diagnostics and scans the entire disk surface to ensure a healthy drive, correct it if it's needed, and alert the user to any potential problems. So monitor your drive's smart status regularly. Windows, unfortunately, does not have a simple way to read the smart details, so a third-party app is usually required. Crystal Disk Info is a popular free Windows utility, but you can also read smart data from OEM manufacturing tools like WD Data Lifeguard or Seagate C-Tools. 10. Future. Hard drives have all but been replaced by solid-state drives in the consumer space, but hard drives are still the most affordable dollar per terabyte random access devices available. Home and small office NAS devices use them regularly. The internet is comprised of hundreds of thousands of servers, maybe even millions, uh, serving data to everyone using primarily large pools of hard drives. It's estimated that the internet has several dozen zettabytes of storage, and one zettabyte is equal to one billion terabyte. The bulk of that data is stored on hard drives. 
Seagate has indicated that hard drive capacities will reach 50 terabyte by 2026 and only expand from there. So hard drives aren't going away anytime soon.